There remains one piece of clothing that seems to lie outside of the bounds of modern times, the kimono. The idea of the kimono is meant to represent the wise mother and the good housewife, which is an idea that has been echoed again and again throughout many of the readings that have been discussed over the course of this paper. The idea of the good housewife, wise mother, quote, emerged in Japan at the end of the 19th century. The term has since been promoted vigorously by male politicians who define women as domestic managers of households and nurturers of children, end quote. Even with the misconception of the, quote, submissive Japanese woman, end quote, at home, in the workforce of Japan, there's still a very innate and underlying idea of, quote, dominant gender ideology, end quote, when it comes to women working outside the home. Despite movements to fix this and rules in place to help combat this, most of these laws are only skin deep. Tamanoi states that, quote, although this law prohibits sex discrimination in all phases of the employment process, it still coexists with the dominant gender ideology, end quote. Tamanoi speaks almost directly with me today, even though the article was authored in 1990, 28 years ago, when she says, quote, popular culture provides only a point of entry into Japan, end quote. What she seems to be telling me is that despite how fascinating pop culture is, it's only one very small facet of Japanese society overall, and even then, it doesn't even start to scratch the surface of all that makes Japan what it is on a social, cultural, and historical level. This project for me is the result of hours and hours of work. I want to say hundreds of hours, but I don't actually have measurement because I wasn't keeping track of time while I was studying. But along with this video, I also wrote a 30-page paper on the subject. The paper was ungraded and it was started out as a way for me to simply take notes. It ended up being a lot more than I'd expected and it is what I pulled a lot of the information from for this video. I've sunk a lot of myself into this project and as my first actual full-length video, I hope it serves well. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. I hope you've enjoyed going through the research and parts of the trip to Japan with me. I tried to stay more away from the fact that I was on vacation and I tried to give it a bit of an anthropological and journalism twist. I didn't have enough time to get permission from the ethics board, so I ended up only going as an observer. I think that if I had been able to interview individuals, collect survey information, or even talk to people, I might have had a lot more information that I could have worked with and I think that I would have had a lot more footage with which to work as well. I found in some ways that being in Japan as an observer only actually limited my access to certain types of information and my ability to gather information. One of the other things that I learned from this project was how much time I spent going through clips in order to edit and stitch pieces together to make sure they kind of fit smoothly. And next time I think I plan to sit down and actually plan out my clips so I know exactly what I'm getting. I want to plan them out in detail so I know exactly what shots I'm getting, where I'm getting them from, what kind of content is going to be in such shots. For a first attempt at this style of video, I actually learned a lot. And it's not just from the anthropology side of things. I learned a lot about myself. I learned about what my craft is going to require. And I've learned that I already know a lot, but there's so much more to learn. There's so much more to learn if I'm going to be doing these videos for a living. That being said, now it's time for something fun. I'm gonna leave you guys with what's coming up next. Please enjoy this giant freaking robot.